Good morning and welcome and happy Easter. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today and I hope that wherever you are tuning in from, that today would be a wonderful celebration of the resurrection of Christ. Uh, may you be blessed as you join in this time with us. So as we come together on this Easter morning, I invite us to bow our heads in prayer. And so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are the risen Christ. We thank you for your love that does so much for us but that at even such a great cost, you would uh, bring a love to us that makes all things new. And so God, as, as we celebrate your life, you, the risen Christ, with us, we pray that you would bring new life to us. Help us to see the world the way, in, in the way that you see it. Help us to trust in this incredible love that brings new life. So we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to be reading from John's Gospel, and we're going to read from John chapter 20, and I'll be starting at verse 19. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lay, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to, to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and, that he had, and all that he had said to her. We give thanks to God for his word to us today. Amen. So our theme for today is the theme of how love makes all things new. We've been following this idea of, of this is what love is. This is love, as we have followed Jesus all the way to the cross and heard uh, his words of love spoken from the cross. What a journey we've been on this Holy Week. We began on Palm Sunday learning about how love disrupts. God loves us too much to leave us how we are. We invited the love of God to disrupt the brokenness that we perpetuate, to overturn the tables of evil that we might have bought into. And then through the week, following the words of Jesus, the, the words of love that Jesus spoke from the cross, we learned how love forgives and love saves, how love protects and love bears all things, how love gives everything even to death. And today, on this Easter Sunday, we celebrate how love makes all things new. All that Easter week could do to destroy faith and hope and love, God, our refuge, has overcome. We celebrate that today. That all our suffering and all our pain and tears, God, our grace, has overcome. All our brokenness and darkness and death, God, our justice, has overcome all these things. All our wars and disease, our riots and floods, God, our strength, has overcome. Yes, indeed, God's love makes all things new. And I really pray that as you hear God's word today, that um, you would leave with that truth, that God's love makes all things new. What new thing do you need? What, what new life do you need God's love to, to spring up in you? You see, Jesus risen from the grave makes all things new. 
not just in, at a cosmic level, not just eschatologically. One day at the end of history, we will be raised to life. But right now, in every second of every moment of every day, Jesus is making all things new. Because of his rising on Easter Sunday, Jesus makes all things new. Jesus raised from the dead wakes us up to the true pattern of God's world, the true pattern of God's created order. You see, we live our lives thinking that the world God created operates completely opposite to, what, to the way that he made it. We think that the pattern of life is to live and then die. Life, death. There is life and then there is death. You are born, you live, and then you die. Things start and they go on for a while and then they end. But no, on this Easter Sunday, we learn that Jesus is alive. And Jesus alive reveals the complete opposite pattern. You see, there is first death and then life. The last word is life, not death. Death first, yes, but then life. And this is always the case. We didn't understand it before, but this is the miracle of God. The miracle of God is that resurrection is life's pattern. Don't be fooled into thinking that it's the other way around. It's not death that is inevitable. It is life that is inevitable. Because God's love constantly, always, makes all things new. Mary Magdalene should have known this truth for herself. She should have understood this pattern. Because when Jesus first meets her, she was dead before she had died. Possessed by seven demons, and I can just imagine the physical and mental anguish and torment that she went through. Her constant humiliation and her incapacity must have been too much to bear. It must have felt like she was, she was dead already. Perhaps she had died many deaths before Jesus had even met her. I wonder how many deaths you have died. How many defeats and disappointments, losses and heartbreaks you have had to go through before uh, you physically die. I wonder how many more deaths you and I will live before that final day when we die. Many of us will feel like we are on a death road right now. We might be feeling like, for us, death is inevitable at the moment. You've been through divorce. You've been retrenched. You've gone through something so bad, or you've done something so bad, that you feel that there's no other way out of this except death. Maybe it would be better if you just died. You suffer abuse that is so stifling that there is a part of you that dies every day. Maybe you've lost your job and that feels like a death. You've ventured something, you've, you've put yourself out there, you've tried for something so hard, and yet even though you tried so hard, it failed. Or maybe you didn't try hard enough and you, and you know you're at fault and you failed and you feel like it's better if we just gave up. Maybe your child is sick or your child won't talk to you and there is just no hope and you feel that all there is to life is death. I want you to hear the overwhelming goodness that this day celebrates, that the pattern of God's grace that comes at a tremendous cost is that there is always life after death and not the other way around. God's love is constantly always making all things new. Now, as good as that might sound to us, there, there has to be a part of us that just thinks, yes, Lord, give me that life. I, 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 want, I want that life that you offer. It poses a problem for us because we all want life. We all want love. We all want things to be made new. But we don't want to die first. To get the life that is there, that is on offer, there must first be death. Remember, that is the pattern. Life, uh, death first and then life. The new life of Easter would not have come unless Jesus had been prepared to die. Where would we be today if Jesus had avoided the death? Mary, like us, is stuck in the old pattern. She can't let go of the dead Jesus. 
to receive the living Christ. She's too afraid to let go of that good past to receive the better future. Yes, it was so good, um, but it is no more. And, and she, she's holding so much onto that past that she can't see the risen Messiah standing in front of her. In her mind, it is better to hold on to the dead bones of what was than to embrace the new life that is on offer. Because it means for her to do that, it means for her to engage in the crisis. It means for her to go through a period of having nothing, of holding nothing in her hands, of being at a loose end. To hold on to the thing that once was. To hold on to the thing that once was alive is to hold on to the thing that is now dead. And so I imagine that there are many of us here who are kind of stuck in that pattern. We're we, we, we holding on to what was. Or maybe it's a sinful pattern. There's this thing that we, we can't let go of because it's a pattern. A bit like Mary, she keeps visiting the dead place. She's the first one to stumble upon the tomb that is empty. She runs back to tell the disciples, and, uh, and she knows Jesus isn't there. She knows that there's no life to be found there, but she returns back to that dead place, to that dead tomb. How many of us are caught in that habitual death, uh, that dead place we keep returning? We keep going to the thing that gives us no life. Could could Easter be that moment where Jesus breaks that pattern for us? Where, where Jesus changes that? Maybe it will take a while. Um, but I hope that God would change that in us. And so bad things happen. Death happens all the time. Circuits dissolve. Ministers leave. WAs close. Children move. Things change. But don't be afraid to let them go. As hard as goodbyes are, as difficult as an end is, love wins. We need to trust that love wins in the end and that death is not the last word. You see, death is not certain. Life is certain. Even now, in whatever death you might face, in the midst of the crisis or the brokenness that you hold trying to hold yourself together in now. Behold, God's love comes to you and makes all things new. In the midst of all that chaos and destruction, I say to you there is a new life growing if we would stop to see and embrace what God is doing. And so I speak these words of, of life over each of us today as, a, as I read Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to end. Here, God's word of grace and new life to you today. Today, you have been crucified with Christ. But it is no longer you, but Christ who lives in you. So the life you now live in the flesh, live it by faith in the Son of God, who loves you and gives himself for you and makes all things new. May we courageously face the death that lies before us, knowing that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that life is inevitable. Life is the last word. Because true love makes all things new. May God make each of us new today. Offer this to us in Jesus' name.